Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to try to do a couple quick uh, cowboy gear videos. I'm going to do a couple ties. Now Val Kilmer played uh, Doc Holliday in Tombstone and this is my version of the Doc Holliday vest. Not quite like it's supposed to be. I could not find the correct material but it's pretty close to it anyways. And same thing for his tie. He wore a kind of a gray silver puff tie with a squared pattern on it and I could not find any of that material either. So I got some of this and it's kind of a shiny uh, gray material similar to what he wore in the uh, in his on his puff tie but uh, we're gonna make an actual puff tie now I have a pattern here from um, Buckaroo Bobbins and it is a pretty easy one it's a cravat or puff tie and it is one page there are only three parts to the pattern and they're on one half of this one sheet that comes with it. So you got the main body of the tie, you got the piece that kind of ties it together, and then you got the strap that goes along the neck. The only other thing you'll need is some of the hardware. And you got these little buckle pieces here that um, are the hardware that goes around the strap there so you can adjust it and hook it onto your neck. Uh, it doesn't actually get tied on there. There are ties that do tie like that, but this one is not one of those. So let's get some of this material laid out and get to cutting it out. All right, like I said, it's a very simple pattern, only three pieces, and I'm not going to cut the pieces out of the paper here. I went ahead and measured it. This is 8 by 14 and a half, but this is folded on one end, so it should be 29 inches. The other piece is 5 by 6, and the other one is an inch and three quarter by, this is, I think, 21. I'm going to make it just a little bit longer because I got a pretty fat neck, so I want to make sure that it fits on there. So I'm just going to take my material. Like I said, it is folded in half so we'll get that folded and this is only a half yard of this material so it does not take much and I'm going to go ahead and start it on the the fold line here and it's going to be 14 and a half inches so I'm just going to get it lined up on my uh, cutting board it is also uh, eight inches wide so I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is Looks like uh, I'll get my edge here lined up. All right, I'm gonna use a straight edge here and my rotary cutter, and I'm gonna cut a strip out eight inches wide. All right, the length of it is gonna be, what did I say? 29 inches long, so I'm just gonna cut it one layer. And the actual lines on the pattern are the cut lines. And this particular pattern has a half inch seam allowance on everything, unless noted otherwise. All right. So there's the main body of it. Now I gotta cut out the other two pieces. So I've got a five by six piece so I can take what I cut off the end there and I can probably go ahead and get the uh, the neck piece cut out too yeah definitely okay there's the piece for the neck and my next piece needs to be five by six and luckily I have six inches there and I need to go five inches the other way. All right, I've got my three pieces cut out there, so let's get to sewing this thing together. According to the instructions here, you're going to take your longest piece, which is going to be the 29 inch long piece. You're going to fold it in half with the right sides in, and then we're going to sew a half inch seam all the way around this thing. I think I'm going to go ahead and pin it because this material seems to want to move around a little bit and it should make things go a little nicer. Okay, so I've got my pieces pinned together there. Now we're going to just take and make a bag out of it pretty much. We're gonna sew across one end and then all the way down the long side there. So we will start with going across the end. 
and it is a half inch seam allowance. All right, now we're going to turn this right side out. Before I get all the way to the other end there, I need to trim the corners of this so that it reduces the bulk in there. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to use my chopstick there to push them corners out. All right, now time to iron it. Got to iron it flat. Now this little piece here is the piece that goes around the center of the puff tie. Same thing, half inch seam allowance. And we'll turn this right side out again. Okay, now one of the things it says to do on the instructions here, on this little piece here, it says right sides together, fold on line of piece two, stitch the length of the piece, leaving both ends open, turn and press, stitch ends together, overcast by machine or hand to prevent fraying. So we're going to flatten this thing out, and then we're going to roll it over like that, and then stitch it together. Okay, so I've got, you know what, I'm going to do this end the same way you're supposed to. And I'm kind of cheating on this, and like I said, I'm also not a professional tailor. Uh, I'm going to go back to a straight stitch on here. And I have taken the ends of this, this is the main part of the puff tie, I've taken the ends of it, and I've folded them in and ironed it, pressed it flat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very small straight stitch right on the end of that. Because it'll look better than anything I do by hand, even if it looks bad. It's a little hard to get started on there, but once you got it, then I was able to put a very, very small seam on there. I mean, I sewed right to the edge of that. Okay, so that's this part of it. And that is this part of it. Oh, you are supposed to sew in the middle there. So we're going to bunch up the middle part of it there once we find the middle. Do kind of an accordion fold there. Okay, the only thing we've got left to do now is do the neck piece. This thing is kind of tricky. You have to fold it over a couple times. And the idea is that you don't have any raw edges showing on there. So I'm going to try my best to get it right this time. I did press two of the seams. And I'm going to try to keep it nice and even as I go along there. Looks like I did better that time. I didn't miss anything anyways. I did on the last try. Is it the right width and everything? It doesn't look too bad. Okay, so now some of the things we gotta do is we gotta get these buckle pieces wherever I put them. Okay, there's three pieces here. I'm gonna take the one that's got the two oval pieces on it. I'm gonna shove that through there and then back down through that hole. Then I'm gonna fold over the end, oh, probably about a quarter of an inch or so. And then I'm gonna pull that kinda close to it, not too close because it makes it hard to get under the sewing machine then. I am gonna move my needle over to the left as far as I can just to get it over to that side. All 
Okay, so that's the little buckle piece on there. Now you got to take this end and go back through there again. And then back through the other side. So you've got the little belt buckle looking piece right there. And eh, I got to take that off because I forgot to put the hook piece on there first. Okay, now I'm going to thread it on there like a regular belt. All right, now on the other end of it, I'm going to trim that up just a hair, get the fuzzy off of it. Now I'm going to put the loop piece on there, and that's the little piece that the hook is going to go into. So same thing. Let's put it on the right way. And I'm going to fold that over just about a quarter of an inch or so. And then fold that over that piece. Okay, there's the belt. And that can be adjusted. Hopefully, <clears throat> I made it big enough to fit my neck. Let's find out. Oh, yeah with enough room for adjustment on it too. Okay, so let me get it unhooked and then get this thing finished up. Now, to me, the loop that's on there is a little bit too big and it actually shows, um, man, it actually shows it kind of loose on there. So really, that's the only thing left to do is just put that on there. It is a puff tie, so I guess that would be puffier, wouldn't it? All right, guys, there it is. There is the puff tie. This is my version of the Doc Holiday one. Like I said, I could not get the correct material, so this was the next best thing, I guess. And it is made with a strap that goes around the neck with the buckle on it, uh, the little loop piece in the front here that holds the tie part to that strap and kind of looks somewhat like a knot that would be holding it on there. Traditional puff ties were actually pretty long. They were narrow in the middle and got wider toward the ends and they were tied like a traditional tie and uh, tucked in your vest and, and then had the little stick pin on there. And I've got my stick pin on there. It is a faux ivory rhinestone silver plated brass stick pin. I have matching cufflinks to go with it and those will be in another video pretty soon. But this is my version of the puff tie, and I think it looks pretty good, even though it's not completely traditional. Next, we're going to make a moño de charro, which is a Mexican bow tie, and this was my first attempt at it. I do not like it. The material is way too stiff, and it needs to be more flexible, have more drape to it, more hang to it. And uh, I mean, it looks pretty close, but it just doesn't look right. And same way with this one, it was made with the strap and the buckle and everything on it, and that's not traditional. Traditional is going to be a really long tie that goes all the way around the neck and ties in the front. We're going to make one that is going to be, I'm going to call it semi-traditional. It's going to be about 44, 45 inches long, and is going to tie just around the top button of the shirt, and hopefully we have the right hang and drape to it, because I've got some material here that I'm going to use, and I'm probably going to make two of them. Uh, one of them is just going to be plain, and the other one is going to be, I might fancy it up a little bit with some of the stitch work that I can do with this sewing machine. Nothing real fancy, but just I want to see about putting a decorative border on it. Anyways, I'm going to get to cutting some material off for this thing and get going on it. All right, this time we're going to do the moño tie, or the Mexican uh, cowboy tie, the charro tie. And all you're going to need is three pieces, and we're going to make it real similar to the puff tie very similar. In fact, two of the pieces will be just about the same. This is a 2 by 24 This is going to be the next strap that goes around there with the buckle set on it. I made it 24 because the other one was just a tad short. I didn't have any more room for adjustment on there. Uh, we also got a little piece here that's 2 inches by 4 inches, and that's going to form the little piece that holds it to the uh, the tie to the neck strap and then the other piece is six by 36 and we are going to put a couple pieces of interfacing on there just to give the bow part of it just a little more um 
a little more stiffness, I guess. Hopefully not too stiff, but anyways, we'll find out. First thing I'm gonna do on this long strip here is I'm gonna just fold it over and sew just a, a seam all the way around the ends of it. I'm gonna do the two ends first and then I'm gonna fold it in and uh, make points on the end of it. Anyways, let me get the machine set up and we'll go for that. Okay, so I've got my main piece here. It was six inches wide, 36 inches long. I marked the center line on there, and I come over three inches and put a piece of fusible uh, interfacing on here. Uh, this will be where the bow part is on the outside. This is six inches wide and seven inches long, so this will be the two bows. So now I went ahead and pressed this seam down a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and get that sewn up, and then we'll work on the ends of it. All right, now that we got the two sides sewn together, we're gonna to go ahead and turn these right sides together and we're gonna get this end sewn up. Okay, now once you've got that established there, you're gonna push that back out. Get you something in there where you can push that corner all the way out. Don't push too hard. If you trimmed it too close, you can push all the way through it, which would not be good. And then you've got your point established on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew right across the end there. Okay, once you've got that part done up where you got the points on the ends there, all you got to do is we're going to fold this over and we're going to fold it back. You want the points to hang out a little bit past the end and you want this fold to be right there in the middle. So I already got a center line established on there. It's just a chalk mark that's on it. And I want to get this butted right up against the end there with that hanging over just a little bit. And then do the same thing on this side. And I want just a little bit of an overlap in the middle because I'm going to sew the middle of that up. Not much. Maybe a quarter inch or so. Then I'll go ahead and pin that. Make sure I got it even on both sides. And then that's something like what you should have there. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew that seam up there. Okay, so there is the actual muño, the tie part of it. We're gonna, this is, this is not traditional, but it's, eh, you know, pretty close. This is gonna get all scrunched up and passed through the centerpiece that we're gonna make next. The next, the rest of it is gonna be just like the, um, the uh, puff tie. Maybe a little stiffer than what I wanted it. You got, you got to watch the interfacing you get. You can get some that's really soft, has no body to it. This actually has a little bit of a body to it, and I actually bought it for uh, a vest for the front panels on there. So maybe we can crinkle it up a little bit and get it uh, not so stiff. But anyways, I'm going to get to making the other pieces, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I've got the neck strap done up. I've got the little, uh, I don't know what you want to call this. It's not really a bow, but it's the center part of it anyways. That's going to slide on there just like that. And then the main body of it is going to have to fit through that little loop too. So let's get that stuffed in there. All right, and once you've got it all the way in there, then you're gonna want the, the bows and the tails on there to droop down a little bit. Make sure your seams are covered up.
get the collar flipped up and we'll try it on and really after doing this now I think I probably should not have put the uh, the fusible interfacing in there because I think it gave it too much too much body I guess But that's the Mexican moño or moño de charro, which is a tie of the cowboys. Um, a lot of them have got fancy designs on them, sort of like what my shirt's got on here. Some of them have horseshoes, horse heads, all kind of stuff on them. But that is, is not traditional moño de charro. It is uh, my version of it, kind of based on the uh, puff tie that I did. It's just a little different bow setup. The back of it, the strap, and the ring part there, the bow part, are pretty much the same. Anyways, that's my version of two different ties for Old West reenactment or characters or whatever you want to call it. Um, not too bad. Pretty easy little project. Can get aggravating sometimes working with the little tiny pieces, especially the strap that goes around your neck. Uh, and it's it's not traditional. A traditional one would have been a long one that you would have actually tied around your neck, kind of like you would a regular necktie. But anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review and taking a look at some uh, cowboy gear. Thanks for watching.